This is pretty fascinating because our friend Peter Schweitzer, author of the best-selling uh, book, Profiles in Corruption, Abuse of Power by America's Progressive Elite, he goes in a chapter and verse in detail in a deep investigative study, and by the way, some of which has been picked up now by the by Breitbart.com, and their headline is, Bloomberg Accused of Helping Communist China Suppress Embarrassing News Stories. Anyway, so uh, Peter Schweitzer has done a deep dive yet again. And he found out that in November of 2013 that Bloomberg News suspended a reporter who exposed corruption involving uh, relatives of, of the Chinese leadership. At a conference in Beijing in 2018 in November, Bloomberg called the Chinese vice president the most influential political figure in China and the world. And this guy's name is, is Wang. He's widely seen as President Xi's enforcer. They nicknamed this guy Angel of Death. In an interview with Firing Line's Margaret Hoover, Bloomberg says the Chinese Communist Party will listen to the public and that uh, President Xi is not a dictator. Really? He's president for life. Nice try. Here with more of the details on this, because this is a big deal, a very big deal, is Peter Schweitzer, a best-selling author. How are you, sir? Hey, I'm great, Sean. How are you doing? I'm good. It seems like systemic for him. As, then, as I look at it, I'm thinking he's making money. This guy, he's compromising principles to make money. Yeah, it's, you know, it's an interesting question, Sean. There's basically two explanations for Michael Bloomberg's actions with regards to China. One is that he really does think the Chinese communist system is like a democracy like the West uh, and that President Xi is not a di dictator. He actually believes that or he's doing it to kowtow to the Chinese because he has a cluster of commercial relationships in Beijing that require him to be in the good graces of the Chinese government. And I think a lot of people look at it and say, Michael Bloomberg is worth $60 billion. He doesn't have to kowtow to anybody. But if your business is so tied up to being in the good graces of the Chinese government, uh, maybe you're prepared to do that to uh, to keep the uh, the money flowing. Yeah. All right. So let's go through these specific incidents. Now, I'll add one other thing. There's a story in Breitbart about how The Intercept reported that uh, a, a woman describing herself as one of the many women that Mike Bloomberg's company tried to silence through non-disclosure agreements, even though she never worked for Bloomberg's companies, but her husband did. And according to this woman, uh, Miss Fincher, Bloomberg brought uh, enormous pressure to bear against the couple to suppress news reports that were embarrassing to the communist Chinese, and she said she was studying uh, sociology uh, in Beijing when her husband worked on a series of Bloomberg News reports about the tremendous wealth accumulated by Chinese leaders and their families, including uh, the relatives of President Xi. And like other visiting Western reporters critical of the communist government, they found themselves, you know, getting death threats, including threats against her and and their and her husband and their two young children and she said Bloomberg News told them not to say anything about the death threats pending an internal investigation but after several months she broke her silence mentioned it on Twitter within a matter of hours she's claiming she said her husband was contacted by a Bloomberg manager and told to get your wife to delete her tweets oh well that sounds very uh that sounds very heartening to me yeah, the, the, her husband is a reporter named Michael Forsyth, who I've met with and, and spoken with. Uh, he's a very good reporter on China, and that's exactly right. He was working for Bloomberg at the time. Uh, he did a lot of uh, aggressive reporting, uh, good, solid reporting, on how the Chinese political leadership was self-enriching. Uh, in email exchanges, Bloomberg editors you know, said, look, you've got the goods. This is amazing. Uh, and then they basically uh, told him to stop reporting it. And uh, Forsyth uh, left uh, Bloomberg. He's now with the New York Times. Um, and it's an act of censorship um, that is consistent uh, with a lot of the things that Michael Bloomberg has said and done over the years in terms of his statements to uh, with regards to China. And part of it, Sean, is, you know, people don't realize his company, Bloomberg LP, which, you know, has these uh, uh, terminals and sells data to investors around the world. I mean, it's a very, very lucrative business. A key component of that business is that he has a licensing agreement with the Chinese government. Um, it was formed in 2010. Interestingly enough, this licensing agreement is with the State Council Information Office, which is also the propaganda wing of the Chinese government. And the point is, is that he takes data, they take data um, involving bonds and financial markets in China, and they sell it to investors and traders around the world.
And China has been the hottest market over the last 10 to 15 years. So this data is really, really important uh, to his business model. Um, and, you know, if he does something to tick off the Chinese or, you know, one of his entities is reporting something they don't like, there's real fear that, that he could potentially lose that license. Um, and let's there are go, other commercial deals as well. Let's go through some of these other the, the, the incidents I mentioned, one in November of 2017, I'm um, sorry, 2013, and number, another in November 2018, and this interview in September 2019 with uh, Margaret uh, Hoover and Bloomberg saying the Chinese Communist Party will listen to the public and that President Xi is not a dictator. I don't believe that. Why would he say that? A great question, and it's really stunning. People can find it online. I would encourage them to look at the full interview. And it, it, you can really tell that uh, uh, Margaret Hoover is interviewing is kind of floored by the statement. Uh, it's it's completely declarative. It's not that, oh, you know, she is trying to do his best for his people. It's that President Xi flat out is not a dictator. And, you know, I think, Sean, you probably agree with me on this. If President Xi is not a dictator, I don't know what a dictator is. Nobody's a dictator. Um, and that's what's so stunning. We know Bloomberg's, you know, a smart guy. He's been in financial uh, uh, business and, and mayor of New York. He knows exactly what's going on in China. And he's choosing, he's choosing uh, to, to, you know, kowtow or soft pedal what's going on in China. And the explanations are either he actually believes it um, or he's doing it to kind of curry favor with the Chinese because uh, they could severely damage his business. I'm trying to understand. He recently announced plans, uh, Bloomberg did his business, to incorporate Chinese bonds into the Bloomberg Barclays Bond Index business with the goal of steering $150 billion in Western capital to Chinese companies, including 159 government-owned businesses. Now, I'll be honest, I don't care if we have good relations with China I kind of like the fact that this president got $220 billion in a two-year deal that helps our farmers, our service industry, our energy sector, our manufacturers, our automobile industry. I mean, that's real money, real jobs, real Americans. I don't have a problem with that. We can do business with people whose politics we don't like um, as long as uh, – but you're saying that very specific actions and things are being done and said here – just because of money and things that he's saying are just not factually accurate. Like, it's wrong to say this guy's not a dictator. He's president for life. How do we know he declared himself president for life? <laughs> exactly. There, there are many people within the Communist Party itself, hierarchy, who are quite upset with him declaring that. So you've got a lot of people in the Chinese Communist Party that would say President Xi is a dictator. And look, you're exactly right. The issue here for me is not that you're doing business with China. There are lots of people that do business with China. But if it starts to distort or, or, or change or alter the statements you are making, especially if you're somebody who, you know, wants to be president of the United States, wants to be a leader of the country, um, you know, that's of serious concern. And, you know, you could look at, 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 at Donald Trump. I mean, Donald Trump has done business with China. His family's done business with China. It does not seem to have affected his policy prescriptions towards China, he's been very, very tough. The question is, if Michael Bloomberg is prepared to make these sort of over-the-top statements that President Xi's not a dictator, that, you know, his enforcer, the angel of death, is the most important person in the world. Um, you've got to wonder and be concerned, either it's something he truly believes or these commercial ties. Uh, that are very lucrative for him, whether he's just prepared to say these things because he wants to keep the flow of money coming. Do you think, like, when you couple everything you're saying here and his comments, well, you're 95, go home, we're not going to treat you, and his comments about uh, minorities in particular and all the cops, and we only arrest minority kids for marijuana because that's where all the crime is, uh, his comments about gays, lesbians, transgenders, uh, the allegations of the things that he said about women and everything in between. I mean, one has to really and it comments about.